Welcome to Family Lifestyles. I'm Janie Klein, Family Consumer Science Agent for Hart County. And I have with me today LaToya Drake. She is the Barron County Family and Consumer Science Agent. LaToya, we have a great subject. I love soups, and you are here today to tell us about all the different kinds of soups. Yes, because it's soup season. I've been saying that on my social media recently, <laughs> because when the weather is cold and chilly and rainy, I just feel like it's a good time to warm yourself with a good, hearty, comfort soup, right? It is. I, actually, I am good with soup any time. Even but when it's hot? You yeah, said that. I, I, yeah. I don't really love it when it's hot, and I'm not a big fan of cold soups, because I feel like a cold soup is just a savory well, no. smoothie, and I'm not into <laughs> savory smoothies. I'm not into the cold soup either, but... But I, mean, I would try cold soups. There's different types of cold soups that I haven't had before, and there's so many types of soups, and soups allow you to, you know, you use up leftovers in your home. Um, they just allow you to get so many different types of vegetables in. I love soups. I do too. I love soups with salads. I love soups with sandwiches. I love soups on their own. Um, soups can be a very good um, thing to eat whenever you're trying to diet or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're low calorie a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You get in a lot of those vegetables, you know, that some people don't like to just sit down and eat a vegetable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in a soup, you know, like broccoli cheddar soup? Mm -hmm. Oh, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> and we're going to talk about some of the health benefits of soups in a later segment um, because they have so many. Right. And it's just an easy way to get some of those vegetables in your diet that you might not normally get in your diet. You can hide them if you dice them real small. Right. You know? Exactly. Uh, exactly. So what kind of soups do we have? You know, we have soups that like a bisque. And that's a thick, rich soup, usually consisting of pureed seafood or uh, a cream. Oh, okay. We also have um, a... So a tomato bisque. Yeah, it would you be know? a creamy or a lobster bisque. Oh, a lobster bisque. I would take some of that bisque. with a grilled oh, that cheese. sounds good. Yes. You're making take, me hungry. I'll take that. <laughs> um, we also have um, a bouillabaisse, and that is a celebrated seafood stew. Okay. I don't think I've had any mm -hmm. of that. I would try that as well. Oh, I would try it. It's, I would try any of it. <laughs> the stew is ladled over a thick slice of French bre bread traditionally. Ooh, that does sound good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, gumbos always sound good, and that's a hearty soup stew made from a variety of meat and seafood. You know, when I think of a gumbo, I think of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> I think of spicy. I think of sausage. I think of shrimp. Right. Um, just everything you can throw into a, a pot that's super flavorful. Yeah. Okra, right? Oh, hadn't thought and of okra. Gumbo. Yeah, yeah, I that's probably would flavors. be really good. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, a chowder is a rich milk and cream base soup. Uh, okay. You know, you have a clam chowder or a broccoli cheddar chowder or a potato chowder. Yeah, those all sound good. Mm -hmm. And then you have a stew, and that is any dish prepared by stewing um, and vegetables and, and, and meats together. So like a beef stew or a chicken stew mm -hmm. or something like that. One of those typical kind of soups that we make in our house right. where you just throw things together and, and stew it all together. That's a stew. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a vichyssoise. I've been practicing oh, what is that. that. <laughs> a vichyssoise is a rich, creamy potato and leek soup that's served cold. Okay. Right. Then we go back to those cold soups. Um, I'm not in for a savory smoothie. I'd rather have a <laughs> sweet, and that's what a cold soup is to me. So I'm not for that. But I guess I would try a Vichy Soise yeah. just to say. Just to but, say we tried it, huh? Yes. Um, it, Actually, I haven't uh, tasted a leek before. Have you? It's like an onion situation, like a large green onion. Yeah, I know what it is, but I've never I tasted have, it. because I made... We grew them at a, a garden at the school when I was working there, and we use them to flavor um, a recipe that we made for farm to table. Okay. So it's kind of like a large kind of green onion. It has that kind so of flavor. So it has that flavor. Flavor out. Okay. So that, I bet the Vichy Swash would be like a, a cold potato soup. Yeah, because a lot of times I put the small onions in there, but mm -hmm. I just haven't had the leeks. So mm -hmm. yeah, that would be good. Very good. Um, you know, you can make a classic cream soup and cream based soups contain milk or cream. Okay. Um, and, and thickened with a mixture of flour and butter or egg yolk. And cream soups must be cooked over low heat and they may be stirred frequently to prevent scorching, you know? Okay, yeah. Um, and they freeze and store well, although a brisk stirring is often required after they thaw out to make sure you get right. everything mixed yeah. back up. 
Yeah, I have frozen the cream soups before, mm -hmm. and they taste just as well, if not better, because, you know, uh, I know we were doing a segment with uh, the Allen County uh, NEP assistant, and we were talking about how the... Uh, Oh, the, the dressings, flavors. The meal together, together, right? Yeah, and that's how the, it goes with the soups as well, isn't it? Yeah, I know I love chili or any soup the next day. Right. Uh, it just feels like it's thicker and heartier and everything has mixed together and just tastes right. uh, so good. Even soups with stock or, or homemade beef, chicken, or, or vegetable stocks are great to use and make the soups flavorful. Um, or you can get a prepared stock <laughs> and use that too. You should look for reduced sodium. And and I just love how stocks and broths make the flavor of a soup, especially if those vegetables and things sit in that stock overnight. Right. Love it. Um, you know, is there a difference in uh, you were talking about the stocks? You know, like vegetable stock versus beef and chicken. Uh, as far as calories, do you know if there's a uh, big difference in using a vegetable compared to a The vegetable is going to have lower fat because there's not going to be any of that animal fat in there. Right. So, of course, it's going to have lower calories. But sometimes you want the nutrients of the animal fat. If you're using a beef uh, a bone broth, that's going to have good proteins like gelatin um, in that. Yeah. So it's good to use sometimes. It's just depending on what you're looking for uh, as far as your diet and what works for you. Right. Um, but they, they make a good base for the soup. They do don't make they? a good base for the soup. I like to use the cheap broths from the big, you know, the big box store. I'll get the off brand. They work just as well. And I, they're really cheap. <laughs> yeah, I keep them on hand so that I can always have stuff to make soup. I really love to start my Sunday with making a soup because I know that I can eat that soup uh, as the week progresses for lunch, and it's a low-cost feeling lunch um, you know, right. idea. And it will keep all mm -hmm. week, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it will keep till then, you know, into the work week, and you can have that to eat on and not spend any money out and have a low-calorie feeling meal. Yeah. Sounds really good. I, soups just, I, I just can't tell you how much I love soups and sandwiches and that type thing. But... Um, Somebody was telling me today that they have little crock, a little, uh, they're not called crock pots. <laughs> they're called slow cookers. Yeah, little ones for the, the soup. Yeah, that you can just put the soup in there, plug it in in the morning when you go to work, and then you're have able fresh to soup. have fresh soup that day. I love to freeze soup, and, and if you're going to freeze soup, you can do that in, a, you know, a small single serving a container and pull that out and have and thaw that out for your work day and you can also freeze them in a freezer bags and flat surface if you you know oh, that and would then take you up can, as much space and that you way. stack yeah. those on top of each other so that you have soup for for days soup in the fridge is going to last uh, or in the freezer is going to last months you know three to right. four months and in the fridge three to five days yeah so you could prepare you were talking about cooking like on a sunday or mm -hmm. something but you could actually just have, if you made like two or three pots of soup, mm -hmm. you could have that all week long, but then also freeze some that you would it. have the next week. So you would only have to cook every other week. Yeah, or do it for a month. Yeah. And cook all your soups up at the beginning of the month and freeze the different kinds and pull them out and, and have right. a different soup. Um, so I think all the soups you've spoken about would mm -hmm. freeze well. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so, too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us about the various kinds of soup. And I think we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some recipes that we have there at work that uh, you can cook from scratch. Yeah, making homemade soups. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Some things in your medicine cabinet are more dangerous than others. When it comes to prescription drugs, Opioid pain medicines can be addictive and even deadly. Keeping unused opioid medicines in your home is risky. Half the people who misuse prescription pain medicines get them from a friend or family member. Over 100 Americans die every day from an opioid overdose, and millions are addicted to opioids. But you can be part of the solution to the opioid crisis. Go through your medicine cabinets, drawers, anywhere you keep unused opioid pills, patches, or syrups, and find out how to dispose of them safely. Visit fda.gov slash drug disposal for details and remove the risk of opioids in your home. 
Welcome back to Family Lifestyles. I'm Janie Klein, Family Consumer Science Agent for Hart County, and I have with me LaToya Drake. She is from Barron County, and we have been talking about soups, and I love soups. Mm -hmm. You have a great recipe, one of our plated up recipes that you're going to share with us today. I am going to share a recipe. You know, homemade soups can be more cost effective and healthier than soups that you might buy on the store shelf uh, in, in the big box store, because those soups on the shelf often have higher sodium mm. and higher fat content so when we're making soups at home we know what exactly is going into them and we have a variety of soup recipes at our local county extension services um, we have a, a plated up Kentucky proud recipes okay a couple that I found are a green bean and ham soup I've not tried that one yet, although either. I've looked at it a couple of times. So. It looks pretty tasty. It's got green beans and potatoes and, and onions uh, and then ham. And, you know, ham is something folks cook on Sunday dinner a lot and you might have leftovers. You know, you can cube up. A, a, a well, bit actually, of you might have all of those leftovers from a Sunday dinner. And just dump this into your pot. We've also got this wonderful broccoli chowder recipe that looks pretty tasty. Uh, more of a cream based kind of soup. Right. Um, the soup we're going to be making today is our turnip green soup. It's really good. <laughs> Super good. Um, it calls for turkey, uh, roasted turkey, but I use chicken, turkey, whatever poultry that I have in my house, I will put in this pot. And it has been really um, enjoyable. Uh, I did it with the senior center. And they okay. loved this recipe. They thought it was tasty. i tell you what I did one time because I didn't have, you know, I was worried about time. Mm -hmm. And so I actually went and got uh, some sandwich meat and had them slice it really thick. Mm. The turkey sandwich meat. And just because I was in it. Yeah, and chopped it up. And so it was very time, of, you know, cut in on that time a lot. Yeah, that would be great. That's a great idea to make that more time efficient. You could also buy the pre-prepared chicken. Right. And, and drain it and dump this right. on it. Right, yeah. And like it'd be a rotisserie chicken or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, just a lot of ways. I love, uh, we. in addition to the Plated Up Kentucky Proud recipes, we have our Cooking with the Calendar series. Okay. And that calendar features a great soup recipe that we'll be cooking um, during the month of February and, and beyond. It's the Cardi Comfort Soup. And it has ground pork. Right. Which I was surprised about. Yeah. And I was surprised about, I haven't used a lot of ground pork, mm -hmm. you know, and we made this actually for a, a homemaker leader lesson. And we were talking about how little fat cooked out of so the pork. pork. It must be really lean. Yes. So yes. that would be a great recipe to use to ha have that lean meat in there and to be nutrient dense, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it has kale in there. Mm -hmm. So... Got a lot of health benefits with that kale, don't we? <laughs> oh, I forgot our greens for our soup. Let me grab these. Um, in our in our turnip green soup, the main ingredient is the turnip greens. We oh wow, we would have been in bad shape if you. And didn't so have this those. this soup here it, it's our plated up Kentucky Proud series. It, it calls for turnip greens either fresh or frozen, and I use frozen because it's just half a bag frozen. Okay. Um, so that's a dollar and twenty cents or so at the big box store. Um, and then the other half is there to add to another soup or do something with later. Um, it calls for roasted turkey. Um, I used uh, chicken because that's what I had at the house. Okay. And it's going to have a similar pr flavor profile because it's poultry. It calls for um, a medium onion. I've got this chopped up for us. It calls for uh, half a cup of fresh carrots that I have um, peeled and chopped. It also calls, calls for about a cup of potatoes. And that's about one medium potato okay, or a couple of smalls. You know, you'll have yeah. a little more. It's, a, it's about a cup of potatoes. And then um, garlic, minced garlic, uh, a can of white beans, and those are less than a dollar. Salt, a cup of water, and um, what is this? Chicken broth yeah. and crushed red pepper. And I've got the salt together with some pepper. Okay. So we're going to start with this recipe, and I like to brown my um, onions first. Okay. Just to add some more flavor and release the flavor of the onions. It just makes it taste totally different to me mm -hmm. when you brown the onions versus just dumping it all in there. Sometimes I'll add a little olive oil if I have, but I've got these. So now I notice you're adding the minced uh, garlic. Yeah. Could you use garlic powder if maybe you didn't have yeah, the fresh? Yeah, you could. And I keep minced garlic in my refrigerator. Okay. 
because I cook all the time for work. So I keep right. the kind that's already chopped up. And I have another spoon down here. And I use it and use it. It comes in the produce section. Right. I think we lost power. We're good. No, we lost power. There we go. Now we have it back. Yeah. Hope the cameras didn't go down. Yeah. So I can hear the, the onions mm -hmm. sizzling. And so you've put the minced garlic in. Yeah, and I'm now gonna we're going to add the chicken. Yes. And this is roasted. This is about uh, one breast. OK. And a thigh. Because that's what I okay. had. OK. So I'm all about. So you mixed your uh, light and your dark meat. Yeah, because that's going to add some flavor. And then the, as the chicken cooked in the oven, it created some juices. Okay. So I added those into there because okay. I want this to be tasty and flavorful. All right. So we've got the shredded chicken, and I used a couple forks to shred that chicken up. Okay. And pull it apart. It smells good. Oh, it does. That's what I was fixing to say. I was like, oh, that smells so good. So I'm just heating all this back up, and I'm going to just start dumping. Because um, it says drain and rinse the white beans, add beans, chicken broth, salt, and one cup of water. So, I mean, and I'm, uh, before that, it says to place the chopped vegetables in the pot. Okay. So here's my chopped turnip greens from the freezer. That makes it a whole lot easier when you... It does, because eating healthy, lots of the time you spend is chopping vegetables. Right, exactly. Now, you know, I have made this before, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, and uh, had my daughter try it. And one thing she was not fond of was the fact that the potatoes cooked up. So maybe could, you know, like they were really, really soft. So maybe could you just um, put those in later? You could put those in later. And when you're making soups from scratch, um, when you fr plan to freeze them, you might not want to freeze them with potatoes. You might want to put your potatoes in later for that, ba right, that reason okay. as you're heating it back up. And I noticed you, you added fresh potatoes, but could you use like the canned potatoes? You could use those, but then the, you like would the want to add, add those towards the end. Right, because they're already... They're already cooked. Yeah. So we've got everything added to our pot um, here. Did we, okay. We're going to add the liquid in just a second. Okay. I just was trying to heat it back up. We've got um, making it up with our, with our electricity here. So I've got chicken broth, and you're going to add enough liquid just to cover everything. So we don't necessarily have to measure that. No. It, said, it gives you some measurements on the recipe, but if you're a cook, you're not going to measure it anyway. We're going to add some water, too. All right. And then we've got our seasonings. Let's put those okay. in there. So good. It smells it so good. It is looking so good. I tell you what, Latoya, we are going to take a break here in just a minute, and then we'll come back and we'll see what this soup looks we like. We will see what this looks like. And then the we'll end talk about the health benefits of it. Definitely. So please stick around and uh, come back and join us and see what this soup looks like. Matthew. Huh? Oh, sorry. It's okay. I just need you to listen to me. I know that a lot of times, Mom, it might not seem like I'm listening to you, but I am. I hear you. And what you say really does matter to me. I mean, let's be honest. No kid likes rules, but I get why we have them. I hear you, and I know it's because you care. All the talks we've had over the years, including what you've told me about not using alcohol and other drugs, they stick with me. And believe it or not, they really do make a difference, especially at times that matter most. Hey. Want a drink? No thanks, I'm good. So thank you, Dad, for talking and preparing me for what's ahead. Thanks, Mom, for never giving up and always being my biggest fan. Thank you for letting me know what you expect so I can try to meet your expectations. Thank you for talking. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Welcome back to Family Lifestyles. I'm here with Latoya Drake. Uh, we are making soups and talking about soups, and I think you wanted to speak
spend just a minute talking about homemade soups from scratch. Yeah, and making homemade soups, because we made a homemade soup with the help of a recipe today. But homemade soups are really easy to make with leftovers that you might have at your house. You just need to start with a protein, and a protein can be something as simple as some ground pork, like we were talking right. at with, with that soup, or some shredded chicken that you've cooked in the oven and roasted it and seasoned it. Or you can use a can of chicken, a can of tuna. Okay. Um, you can use tuna. Tofu. Yeah. I never thought of using I mean, if tuna. you were going to make a seafood chowder, yeah. that might be something good to use and cheap. Oh, that does sound good. Um, you could also use some beans. Beans of all different kinds provide a good vegetarian source of protein. You also have tofu. That might be something some people like in their soup, right? Yeah. There's so many different protein options that you can use. Um, you can also use, uh, you need to add a vegetable. So okay. you got your protein, add your vegetables. You and we often think of like corn and potatoes, mm -hmm. but just like our recipe here that called for turnips, yeah. we need to branch out a little we, bit. And collards are a great option. Squash are great options. Sweet potatoes, yeah. uh, green beans, carrots, peas, cauliflower. Okay. Um, a tomatoes are a great option. Asparagus could be a good soup, right? Okay. Um, and then you want to think about your carbohydrates, if you want to add something to that to your soup. This soup doesn't include any, but you could add rice or quinoa, barley. You could add oatmeal and have a savory kind of oatmeal situation. Okay. Um, you know, hadn't thought of adding oatmeal either. Any of those things. And, and you want to consider uh, the liquid that you use in your soup, whether you use vegetable, chicken, or beef broth. Uh, that's going to add more flavor with your vegetables, your protein, and your carbohydrate. And then you want to make sure that you add your favorite seasonings to give it, a, you know, the best flavor profile that you can. Right. Okay. And, and you can use anything to make these homemade soups. Well, you know, you were talking about using the broth, but mm -hmm. we could also use a cream base as in cream, milk, or something like that, but it's going to add those calories. It's it? going to add calories to the soup, and that's okay because soups are so filled with water. Uh, it, it's still going to be lower calories than some of the other meals that you can you can eat, make and eat because right. uh, they're liquid. Um, and speaking of health benefits of soup, that's a great segue. Uh, the American Heart Association, Janie, recommends that we eat eight plus servings of fruit or vegetables a day. That's a lot of fruit or vegetables. It's hard yeah. to get that many in, especially That's, if you're on the go. It is hard. It's like about four and a half cups. Yeah. So soups can help us can, uh, and contribute to that uh, four and a half cups of fruits and vegetables uh, and, that we need to, to live and be our optimal selves. And as we were talking earlier, you know, you can prepare soups at the first of the week. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help you, you know, get, get those fruits and vegetables in throughout the, the week. Yeah, so... Uh, soups are a great way to boost our vegetable and fruit intake. Um, almost any vegetables lend themselves to being good in soups. Okay. You can use frozen, you can use fresh, you can use canned. They're all going to be good in a soup. And when you saw in our turnip green soup, we used a little bit of all. We used fresh carrots and potatoes, and we used uh, frozen turnip greens, and we used okay. canned beans. Yeah. So... And it really and truly, it didn't take us any time to put all that together. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you had did some prep work, you mm -hmm. know, where you were cutting your carrots and your potatoes. You had to peel those and chop them. Right. But honestly, you probably could get all this together in probably, what, 30 minutes? It's, yeah, it took me about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get yeah. that done at my, uh, this morning before I came here. Yeah. yeah. So, and then just, you know, throw it on in, in a crock pot in the, or a slow cooker mm -hmm. in the morning. You could do that, this one easily like that, and it'd be ready when you got home from work. Um, I love soups for the fact that you can dice vegetables and things really, really small and hide those from children who yeah. might not eat them otherwise. It's a great way to get some of those um, good nutrients in that they need. Yeah. And we all need. Right. And, and if the smaller you cut them, chop them, or dice them, you know, the less likely they are to see those. If you just threw a whole green bean in there and they will not eat green beans, mm -hmm. they're going to reject the whole soup. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just some little tips like that can make a huge difference in how you get all those vegetables and fruits into the, their diet. And, you know, Janie, soups are really nutrient-rich because you're le using lean meats, um, fish, and beans, and those are providing your proteins. Mm -hmm. And you're using vegetables, and those are great sources of a variety of vitamins, including vitamin A and C. Or, um, and 
cream soups supply calcium and vitamin D through their dairy. And you know, some nutrients are more readily available to our body when we cook them. Uh, for example, the beta carotene, the vitamin A in carrots is more nutrient available to us and we can absorb it better after it's cooked. As is lycopene in tomatoes, which is an antioxidant. Right. That's more available to us when we cook it. So soups are just nutrient dense and great for us to eat. Uh, thinking about bone broth, that has gelatin and also collagen, which are great sources of protein, which are going to help uh, strengthen our, our bones. And they say bone broth is good for um, your immunity and gut health as well okay. as joint health. I know my daughter a lot of times will take the turkey, like, you know, at Thanksgiving or whatever, mm -hmm. and just take the bones and put them back in a pot mm -hmm. and, you know, with maybe some seasonings and, and that type thing. And then uh, after oh. it's cooked for a, a pretty good while, she will uh, put that in freezer bags and put them in the freezer. Yes. And then she has She's broth wrong. for a long time. You and know, she like can use that to make her homemade suits or to right. flavor mashed potatoes right. or to do great things with. And, you know, broths are a great uh, source of nutrients and just great to sip on if you're not feeling the best. And, I, and that's why I like soups as an extension of broth, right? Um, soups also may be tailored to fit your dietary preferences. You can make soups low fat. Uh, you can use fat-free broths. You can use skim milk instead of milk. Mm -hmm. You can use pureed beans instead of cream, right? Oh, Mix that up. hadn't heard of that one, but that sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, chilling soups and then skimming off that excess fat is going to help lower that overall fat content. And then using reduced um, sodium prepared broths if you're going to use the pre-prepared broths. Um, I mentioned earlier that soups contain um, ample water, so that makes them filling. And eating a high volume, low calorie foods may assist with weight loss. So that's something good to know. So eating soups is going to help us lose weight. Right. So I need to make more soups. We do all <laughs> need to make more soups. And this soup looks pretty yummy, Janie. It does. And oh, it smells so good. It's getting boiling now. So I this think is. Latoya's making us all hungry today. <laughs> if this is our turnip green soup, super colorful. Uh, has a variety of different food types in it. Let's take a look at this. You know, we had spoken about earlier about our children and trying to hide things in there. But if we'll start our children out early on eating, you know, giving them different uh, foods to eat, they're more likely as they get older to experiment with food, and which is a good thing. And we must be an example and eat some of those things, too, and make sure we're getting all our fruits and vegetables. Right. Because if we're eating these good things, the kids are going to most likely uh, try them as well, right? Right. So exactly. check this out. It's pretty, the, the color of the, of the juice in that. Yeah. Is, Can you tilt it just a little yeah. bit more? Really yeah. hearty and good. Uh, you know, sick season was going around us recently, and this was, I, I had the sickness too, and this was just a great soup to, to eat during that. Yeah, I'm going to have a lunch and learn soon, so I'm going to try to uh, cook some of that as well. Well, thank you so much for joining with us today, and uh, this delicious soup. I can't wait till we're off the air and I can try it. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to stop by the Extension office and grab some of these recipes for some delicious soups this winter.